Now, let me get rid of this mess that I've got on the board. And let's start over and we'll center everything up here. And we'll take all the formulas that we know to be true. And then what we'll do, we'll isolate each of the variables on all the equations that we know to be true. We have up to this time now, we have four equations. We have, we started out with Ohm's Law. E is equal to I times R. Then we introduce the basic power formula, P is equal to E times I. Combining those two by taking what we know to be true for voltage and current out of Ohm's Law, we came up with two more formulas, power formulas, and that was P is equal to I squared R, and P is equal to E squared over R. Now, as you can see from those formulas, that we have three variables in each of those formulas. If we isolate then each of those variables, we will have 12 formulas. Now in your book you'll notice the memory wheel. There's 12 formulas on there. I'll show you now where those formulas came from. If we take basic Ohm's law, E is equal to I times R. We did this before, so I won't rework this one, but I'll just show the variables as we isolated them. And we have I then is equal to E over R. R then is equal to E over I. Now this is the formula that we started out with. I'll just mark that. Now, we've taken our first formula and isolated the variables. Okay, now let's take the basic power formula. We know that P is equal to E I. If I divide I on both sides, You see where then we have E is equal to P over I. Now we'll bring the basic power formula over. P is equal to E I. We have a new formula now then as well. E then is equal to P divided by I. If I do the same thing for voltage, P then is equal to E I. Divide voltage on either side. I have a new formula then. I then is equal to um, P divided by E. Okay, now we've eliminated the basic power formula. Now here we have a formula P is equal to I squared R. This formula is sometimes referred to as the power loss formula. The reason for that is the amount of current through our circuit times the resistance of that circuit would give us the power loss of that circuit. Okay? Now, let's take this one. We have P then is equal to I squared R. If I want to isolate the R, I would divide I squared on both sides. Then I have a formula here now of uh, R then is equal to P divided by I squared. Go back again. Let's plug in our power loss formula. We have P is equal to I squared R. Okay. P is equal to I squared R. The variable we haven't isolated up to this time now is I. So if I divide R on both sides, 
you'll see I have I squared then is equal to P divided by R. We want I, not I squared, so what we do is, is I squared is I times I. If I want the value multiplied times itself is equal to or no greater than that, you see I would have to take the square root of that to find out what value times itself. Okay, in this case then I would have to take the square root then of both sides to maintain our equality now. Now square root, what value times itself? Okay, that would be I then is equal to the square root of P divided by R. So I'll put that in here, then I then is equal to the square root of P times R. Okay, now we've dealt with all but the last one. Now we have another formula here. And I haven't got a name for that. However, this formula, P is equal to E squared over R, explains the value of increasing your voltage. In other words, if I increase my voltage, I'll increase the capacity of my circuit. And that value that it would increase it by is by the square of the voltage. In other words, if I would change, if I would change my system voltage, now we're going to deal with system voltages later, and I'll bring this up again. But if I would increase my system voltage by 1.73, take 1.73 times itself, would give you a value of three. So if I would increase my system voltage from 2400 to 4160, for example, that's an increase of one to 1.73. What would, what would happen there is I would have three times the capacity. Now this formula explains that. If we get into alternating current, you'll see we'll be, we would be dealing with, not with resistance, but with, with impedance, total opposition to current flow. This we'll deal with later. Now here, if we want to find the value of E, for example, what I would want to do is multiply R on both sides. I multiply R on both sides, you'll see I'll have a formula then. E squared is equal to RP. Now these two numbers could be transposed, however. Now, we want what number times itself? We'd have to take square root of both sides. And when we do that, we'll have a formula then. E then is equal to the square root of RP or PR, whichever way you want to say that. So if we put that value up here, we'll have then E then is equal to the square root of RP. Okay, go back to our formula again, which was P is equal to E squared over R. Now, what we want to do this time is isolate for R. We, we, you, you saw how if I multiply R on both sides, I have a situation like this. But now this time what we want is R. So I want to divide R on, or uh, uh, P on both sides, excuse me. Then we'll have a formula like this. R then is equal to E squared over P. Now, as you see, here what we have is, is 12 formula. Now, as you can see here, what we've got is our four formulas. We have one here. We have one here. Now, to start with, you see we had Ohm's law and the basic power formulas. I mean, we had uh, we had uh, E is equal to I times R. Then we had P is equal to E times I. Now, those were the two we started out with. With those two, 
we combine what we knew to be true out of Ohm's law into the basic power formula. Then we came up with two more formulas. One of them here is the power loss formula that we talked about. Then the other one over here is E squared over R. We know this, this to be our three power formulas in Ohm's law. Now, with those formulas, what we did was to isolate the variables out of each of those to come up with 12 formulas altogether. Now, we've got three formulas for all four of our variables. We have voltage, current, resistance, and power. There's three formulas for each, and I'll show you those. Say for example, voltage. Here's one for voltage, voltage, and voltage. Okay, current. Here's one for current, current, and current. Resistance. Here's one for resistance, and there's one for resistance. And here's one for resistance. Then we have our three power formulas, which I have blocked off. We'll leave those blocked off. I'll just take this one off there. Then you can see our, our three power formulas. 